There we go. Is this it? No, I don't even think so. A little ominous. Oh, for crying out loud. Ooh. Aye, aye, aye. Ooh. Ah. No one's coming through here. No one's gonna be on the river. And that's my way out. <laughs> All right, it's a little fresher than my last trip. Got a bit of a breeze, a headwind, not too bad. And the water is definitely a few degrees colder. It's quickly approaching freezing. I didn't think that I was going to get out for another camping trip, but uh, Haha, -ha. here we are. Just another one night trip. There aren't many options right now because the, the lakes, the bays, they're frozen. And uh, that means the river where there's current is the only thing that's open, the only thing possible. And so I'm on the Ottawa River and putting in a little town called La Paz and I'm, what, how far am I doing? It's not that far. It's probably, I don't know, 30 kilometers total. I'll do half today, half tomorrow. It takes me through the main whitewater section, uh, but I'm not gonna hit the, the main whitewater section. There's, I guess you could call it a sneak route, but there's a route that you can take that bypasses all the big rapids. I haven't done it in about 15 years. I did it once about 15 years ago and that's it. The water's high, so there's enough water, should be enough water to get through there. Hopefully it's not frozen. <laughs> I'm paddling the P&H Leo and uh, the last trip I did in the Melker Ulvan, a, a composite boat. This, I did not want to take a composite boat down this section, I'm going to be dealing with white water. I might need to drag the boat in a variety of places. I just don't know what I'm going to be dealing with. And a plastic boat is, you can just drag it when you need to. And you can hit rocks and not worry. And so a plastic boat is the right choice for today. Huh. They're going to freak the whole lot of them out. Sorry guys, you're in my way. Well, taking a little lunch break. <laughs> I'm behind schedule again. And uh, you know, this is the second trip in a row where it's really proven to be one of the biggest challenges for multi-day trips, especially short multi-day trips this time of the year, is uh, the short, short days, you know? It's gonna be dark by five o'clock now, even earlier than my last trip. And uh, that means, you know, I wanna get to camp in a couple of hours, at the worst, before that. And I've only, uh, that means I have about about an hour and a half, two hours max to find a campsite. And, and I even haven't even made it to the whitewater section. So I've got some ground to cover, although I can't really cover ground much faster. Once I get into the current, I'll start moving faster. But anyway, better eat up and get going. Oh. Man, oh man. Oh, come on, just need a little break right now.
Oh, man. Well, these things happen. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that just happened though. I just did a quick. I have my phone. I do, good. I just did a uh, quick flight with the drone. <laughs> and I was flying back to me, to home base. I was done flying around. And I was flying back to where I could have sworn I was, but I was like, gosh, where is that big orange kayak? I, I thought it would be right there. And then I see it on the screen <laughs> floating out in the middle of the river. And I realized, oh my gosh, it's floated away. I didn't pull it up far enough. Far enough. And so I scrambled to land the drone, made sure my pockets were empty, and jumped in the water and swam across the river. Fortunately, my boat got hung up on the far shore because there was current that was just, I mean, if it didn't get hung up, it would have just kept going. Holy moly, that sucked. <laughs> oh. Unbelievable. The dry suit did its job. I'm not wet. One, I don't even have a drop inside the suit. And so that's what's keeping me, you know, keeping this from being a really dangerous situation with the kind of cold temperatures I, I'm dealing with right now. But my hands, my gosh, my hands were numb. Oh, they're starting to warm up in the pogies. <laughs> Live and learn. I seem to be doing a whole lot of both these days. Okay, one down. This one's a little bigger here. I was expecting to get about five miles further today, <laughs> but it's already 2.30. This was supposed to be my cutoff point. And so this place, I found a camp, someone's old campsite. And so I might, uh, I think I will. I can take a look at it at least and call it a night here. I think I'll, Pull the kayak up this time. <laughs> uh, 
I don't want to go for another swim. Well, <laughs> this will definitely work. Incredible what you find. Just didn't even know that this was here. Finding wood is not gonna be a challenge like it was last time either. That's nice. Well, it's food time once again. And once again, I am proving that I'm actually not a bad cook and I do pretty much all the cooking at home. But when I come camping, I very regularly take the easy way out with a dehydrated meal. I don't know why, I just, I like good food, but on a camp trip, I don't like spending my time cooking, especially on a trip like this where, I don't know, don't have much daylight. There's enough work to be done already. I'm sure I'd really appreciate it if I took the time. And actually, a buddy of mine, uh, Chef Corso, who he, he's got a uh, YouTube channel called Outdoor Eats, and it's all about eating well on the trail and the outdoors, where, wherever, and he's a chef and he's taken that expertise to the back country and he would be so disappointed in me. But, sorry, <laughs> sorry Chef Corso. <laughs> it's just the way it is with me. I want you to come and prove me wrong. Teach, show me the light, okay? <laughs> oh my gosh, let's see. Oh yeah. Who doesn't like dehydrated meals? Come on.
Well, pretty mild morning, which is nice. It was, it started snowing last night and then the snow turned to rain and it rained most of the night, but then it stopped, the wind laid down and yeah, it's been a pretty gorgeous morning. I'm in a really cool spot. This is an island that's cut by this uh, really small stream that pops out pretty much where all the rapids are, are done. It should be really cool, especially this first part that I just don't know uh, at all. Once I'm through here and back onto the main river, then as long as the wind stays low, um, got one rapid and then the rest is pretty much a grind of a paddle through a beautiful countryside. So, got a good day ahead of me. And we're off. Not bad timing. It's 10.45, so I'm 15 minutes behind schedule, but I'm okay with that. So that really made a difference, breaking my gear up into smaller pieces, packing this kayak. And uh, I still needed to uh, put these two big dry bags on the, uh, on the top of the kayak but I put the lightest stuff possible. I put that, that foam sleeping pad on here, my big puffy, uh, what else is in here? My um, sleeping bag, uh, the big bulky light stuff. And then the heavier stuff, I tried to keep as much to the center of the kayak. So when I was putting it in the bow or stern hatches, uh, I'm trying to keep the heavier stuff close to the center of the kayak. It just makes it more maneuverable. When you have the heavy stuff in the ends of the kayak, it's definitely, it, it impacts the performance of the boat more than it needs to. So, should be good to go. Cool, it's getting narrow. And I definitely hear some fast moving water here. It doesn't sound too loud. It's probably not a big rapid. Oh yeah, not too bad. Cool spot. Oh yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> right on. Well, that was a good start. It really is amazing. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> I mean, I should have known there'd be a bunch of little rapids. I don't remember these at all. All I remember is one good size one at the end. Interesting. This has got a big hunk of wood at the top. Can I get... I think I can get through. Tight corner. Huh. I'm gonna go take a look at this one. 
think I can just see it from that eddy. The question is, what's around that corner? <laughs> wow. How can I not remember this? I gotta take a look at this. <laughs> was hoping for. It's actually not that bad of a, ra a little rapid. I could totally do it, but the problem is wood. And I mean, it's fine up here. The wood's not in the way. Uh, but down below here, after this pretty tight, this tight corner here, there's a log down there. Not the branches you can see. There's a log coming while splitting the river in two. It's almost going upstream, up to downstream. And if I end up on the river right of it, it's a real problem. And I don't think I'm maneuverable enough to make it around this corner, turn quick enough and make it left. So I really don't have much choice here. I'm gonna have to walk around this one. I think what I might do though, is I might come into this eddy right here and then drag over from there so I'm not doing this whole way because it's a nasty shoreline. Here we go. Ooh, shallow. Didn't see that. Well, it's actually a little worse than I was expecting. The log is all the way across. There's no squeaking by it, really. Yeah, this is the kind of tree that can cause real problems. This is why I brought a plastic boat this time. doesn't have a strong turning radius when it's loaded like this. Not for a creek. This is not a creek boat. Oh my god, this is cool though. And some more white water. Why don't I remember any of this? Huh, another interesting rapid. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at this one too. <laughs> this is an interesting one as well. You know, I think the reason I don't really remember any of these rapids is because in a whitewater kayak, you know, they're pretty much nothing. It's a sea kayak, a loaded sea kayak, where it just changes the game, makes them something. But I think I can, uh, I'm gonna pull into the 
the eddy down below here and then pull out and just kind of bum 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 binky binky over the rocks it's not going to be pretty but but it's probably the best line Okay. All right. Ooh, there we go. Oh, sweet. Get time for a snack. Oh, what do I feel like? Some coconut and oh yeah, oh, apricots. Wow, more wood and a rapid. But there's an eddy I can pull over into. Yeah, I can make it through there and then catch that eddy on the left and scout from there. Ah, it's going right through the middle. Well, the weather has taken a, a little turn. <laughs> a little ominous. This one looks fine. I'm just gonna bink down this close part right here. Where, where is it? Like, anyway, this close side. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm gonna do. Question is, down there. I don't know what we got down there. We'll soon find out. All right. This is a This is a tough call. It's uh it's a sporty rapid. Uh, you know, in a whitewater kayak, you know, not a big deal. Sea kayak, it just, in a loaded sea kayak, it changes everything. The biggest issue is this actually drops a fair bit and it's narrow. And there's a couple of spots that if the sea kayak's nose got hung, got hit a rock and the boat turned, it's the the river the creek isn't wide enough to let that stern pass through it could easily stern could then catch and now you've got a broke situation both ends of the kayak are stuck in the middle of heavy white water and that's a real problem that's a uh that's a real immediate problem danger a scary situation but then even when you do get out of there, you've got a second situation, which is your boat. I'm in the middle of, no one's coming through here. No one's gonna be on the river. And that's my way out. Arr, I hate saying no to something like this because it looks fun and it looks challenging, but alone out here, it's just not worth it question is now, how am I going to get around? Well, 
not running the bottom section, but I can shave some of the dragging by uh, running this top little drop and uh, a little bit more downstream. There's an eddy I can pull into. Whoops. You're still not staying on there. So it'll make my life a little easier. Yeah, I just have to bump and grind down the left-hand side to avoid that tree. It'll be a real bump and grind. All right. That's okay. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Come on, turn. <laughs> the tree I was worried about. It's more than a worry. You can't go there. Oh man. All right. I have made it to the Ottawa. Heck yeah. And I am so glad I didn't choose a composite kayak today because wow that boat would have had the tar beaten out of it oh look at that blue sky no way Well, I made it through the tough stuff. <laughs> Tougher than I was expecting, but you know, that is definitely a huge part of the fun when an adventure becomes more adventuresome than you anticipated. 
but not too adventuresome. <laughs> that was great. But I got one more rapid coming up called Muskrat. And then after that, a bit of a, just a, a flat water grind. Well, it's probably as good a time as any to sign off. I've got about five miles left of pure grind. Hopefully the weather, the wind will uh, be favorable. And it won't snow anymore or sleet. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I've certainly enjoyed doing it and I, I look forward to doing a lot more of these and love to hear what you think. If you're enjoying them, if you want to see more of something, you know, I do plan on doing a video and showing all the gear that I am using for a trip like this. So stay tuned for that one. But otherwise, yeah, subscribe if you haven't already because there are a lot more paddling adventures coming your way. But not for a few months because it's about to get really cold here and I'm gonna swap the paddle for some skis and ski poles and start planning for the new year. And I've got some good trips planned. Love to hear where you think I should go. I'm, you know, I really want to do a bunch more trips in the five to seven day length. I got lots on the list, but uh, love to, <laughs> I'm always game for putting more cool trips on the list. So anyway, we'll see you again soon for another paddling adventure gear review or tip or all of them together <laughs> here we go grind on